The Reno Phil and the Nevada Museum of Art have been looking for the perfect project on which to collaborate for years. And with this photographic collection, the Altered Landscape Collection, we found the perfect match. I am so thrilled that we're all here. We've had so many initial discussions about this topic and to be at this moment where I get to bring in Jimmy Lopez Bolito, this composer that I have been uh, searching for and watching over years and years. And now I have just decided that he is perfect for this topic and this project. So welcome, Jimmy. I think this is wonderful because what excites me about the project too is how very Reno specific it is. And it joins two families, right? In the Reno Philharmonic and the Nevada Museum. Absolutely. And so trying to make sure that that there is really this kind of synergy and that that is reflected in the composition itself. Yeah. And so that it has really a reason to exist. Yeah, so it's, it's really exciting actually to see some of these that we've been pouring over and, and uh, discussing. Well, you know, I think when we first heard about some of your initial ideas, our first <clears throat> light bulb moment was the Altered Landscape Photography Collection. It's uh, our largest signature collection here at the museum. It was endowed in the early 1990s by Carol Frank Buck, who's been a generous uh, generous donor to the collection. It has over 2,000 photographs that look at the ways that humans alter the landscape. And so those, those, the ideas behind the collection really seem to dovetail with some of the things that you brought to us initially. And so we thought today we would just bring out some of <clears throat> sort of the key photographs in the collection to give you a taste of what uh, the collection consists of. It's a really important collection. The museum started to acquire photography in the early uh, 1990s, but we, we, we looked to the moment of the 1970s. That was a pivotal period in photography where photographers were moving away from sort of the romantic nature imagery of Ansel Adams, and they wanted to look at what was changing in our world, and there was a lot of human impact. And so mm -hmm. that is the sort of foundational idea behind the photographs in this collection, and you see that manifested in, in many, many different ways. I mean, one of the things that I noticed first is like the presence of, you, of humans is, is evident because they leave traces in the pictures, sometimes very subtle traces, sometimes it's really very much in your face, like a, a concrete building in front of you, but, but rarely do humans actually make an appearance. So I suppose when cu curating the collection, there was kind of a, a guiding principle or criteria into what kind of pictures we're gonna to make it you know, into the collection. Well, I think I've, I've been given uh, so much access uh, that you know, a regular, let's say, visitor to the museum perhaps wouldn't have. I mean, the pictures speak to, by themselves, but when you're looking into creating a work of art that is inspired by a collection, you need to understand the genesis of the collection as well, yeah. you know, to understand it from a, very, from a very deep point of view. The shape of the collection has definitely evolved over time. I think mm -hmm. a lot of the early acquisitions were exactly uh, exactly what you're pointing out, sort of acknowledging the trace of the human mark, the trace of our impact, but not really acknowledging that the person or the body was responsible for that change. Mm -hmm. And so you see over the you know the the course of the collection's evolution, the acknowledgement of you know that it is people that are making these um, impacts on the landscape. So a lot of the larger color photography that we've acquired more recently does have um, you know a human presence in it uh, to sort of acknowledge that that change um, that we're all seeing. So I think this collection also serves the purpose of bringing attention to a, a changing landscape that, you know, uh, it is very much dependent or, uh, on what our actions are going to be uh, from now on. But also the, the chance to build awareness around this topic in this moment in time to create uh, a piece, a musical, a sonic uh, sort of uh, overlay to the art that already exists in this collection, I think is really exciting. And we can probably do something really interesting with that. I also hadn't worked uh, in a similar project prior in the sense that I had never tried to fuse photography and music. So that was also an interesting challenge. And the fact that the collection was speaking to our times in that it is dealing with, you know, uh, traces of the presence of humans in natural landscapes or fully or landscapes that have been fully created by humans 
um, I, it really sp struck a chord because I think this is something that is very relevant to our times. The images that you ultimately select, uh, we'd like to learn from you. What was inspiring about those images that helped to craft this, this composition that you're, that you're about to work on? I've been thinking about our love of film and the movies and how if we were to watch a movie without the soundtrack, without the music, it's pretty much an intellectual experience. But the emotion comes That's in yeah. with the music mm -hmm. and the soundtrack. And I think that I'm really interested in seeing how these, these very powerful and provocative images already in their own right suddenly take on a whole new life. I think what I want to do is just look at the images and see what they, what they awaken in me. And in a way, you know, later on, be able to articulate that in, in, in music, uh, in a musical way. But I really want you to be a part of, of the creative process too. Oh, well, thank you, Jimmy. But they, you know, I, I'm excited to hear what you said, David, about you know, uh, the, the emotion that comes in through sound. It's actually one of the reasons that I have chosen Jimmy to be the composer for this project. The first time that I worked with Jimmy was in 2017, and I was guest conducting a string orchestra in a, a, that had commissioned a work by him. And as I studied it, you know, I didn't know Jimmy at all, but as I was studying the music, the, the, um, the lyricism, the melodies, the, the passionate, emotive quality of his writing just mm. jumped off mm. the page. And then when I watched the musicians engage uh, with the music and how interested they were and, you know, how beautifully it, written it was, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, when, that's what really, really piqued my interest. So I think that in Jimmy, we will find, um, uh, he will give this project the depth of thought and research, but ultimately craft something that is completely um, uh, accessible and, and emotive at mm -hmm. the same time. I think mm -hmm. it'll be really thrilling. You know, one, one thing that I take away from the project is um, I, I will never take anything for granted again. I, I feel that, first of all, it has exposed me to uh, the art of photography, mm -hmm. which uh, I had very little exposure to prior. So it has increased my awareness and appreciation for it. But it also has brought, uh, opened my eyes into a reality that we all knew was there, climate change. But uh, in that coupled with the fact that, you know, living in California and experiencing the, the seasonal fires and getting it so close to home, I just felt the urgency of this collection. So I feel that these stories need to be told. And I don't think I'll go back, you know, to, to just living as I used to, in a way. I feel that action needs to be taken by all of us, individually and collectively. seeks to serve and enrich this community with all that we do. And we know that collaborating with our community partners strengthens the fabric of this region. With this project, we bring together three institutions, the Reno Phil, the Nevada Museum of Art, and the Nature Conservancy to amplify action and impact through the megaphone of art and music. With all that we do leading up to the premiere of the symphony, we hope to inspire conversations about our relationship with this land that we love, with the rivers on which we depend so deeply, and with all of the natural resources on which we build our lives. And then we seek to go one step further with our impact. After the premiere of the symphony, we will offer this piece as a gift to orchestras across the globe so that they too can use this wonderful new work as a powerful catalyst to, to inspire all of us to be better stewards of this magnificent planet, to make a tangible difference in partnership with the Nature Conservancy. And I also hope that orchestras around the globe will pick up the symphony and perform it. 
And we're actually setting up a way for orchestras to really give back. Rather than paying the Reno Phil a commissioning fee to perform the work, we're asking them to make a donation to the Nature Conservancy so that this piece will have, you know, it will bring awareness, but then also will give hope and will, will be about taking that action. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have done it anyway. <laughs> so oh my excited gosh. to see you. It's incredible. It's totally incredible. Here we are. Finally. It's kind of incredible, isn't it? It is. It is. It's, uh, I don't know. I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more excited than terrified. Uh, I'm both. I'm both. I'm so, really, really, yeah, like, keyed up. I'm really, I just can't believe that we're finally going to hear yeah. Hear the first sounds of this, give birth to this thing. So this wonderful bloom, you know, that is what we really want to get. And what I will be um, really interested to get, you know, at G is that the three layers that you have, the mm -hmm. sort of echo effect of the, um, the melody, that all of those you can hear. It always helps to tell them that we need the swells, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the swells can be... Have to put this. I mean, they they can be gradual, but we can also like they can be a little more exponential towards the actual dynamic that's supposed to stand out. Like you know, like going there and really retreating. We should invite the players when they if they have questions or things they're not understanding. This is a real like they should have a dialogue with you. They should. This is a great time for us to like mm -hmm. iron that stuff out, and so they know, or if they need to get a certain mute that they don't have, something like that. We were we didn't even know if it was all going to happen just because of the pandemic shutting the whole everything down. Yes. You know, and we're still in it. But I love the the persistence of this project. Yeah. How it and, has transformed itself. Yes. Throughout, you know. And and here we are, and it's not easy. And you know, I mean, like the just to get everybody here to make music. Yeah. I it's know. not easy, but it's worth it. Yeah. Um, so it will be exciting. Thank you. We're gonna do it. It's the beginning, Timmy. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's the, the beginning. beginning. <laughs> Yay. Okay. This is a project that you know was written at the height of the pandemic. I, I, was, I wrote it in 2020, and Laura and I had discussions about how to make it relevant you know, throughout uh, everything that was happening. And so it felt almost inevitable uh, that the pandemic was lurking into the piece as well. Um, and stillness is a little bit of that reflective moment where everything just comes to a halt. And we are forced to deal with this new reality that is so different from all the frenzy of our lives prior to that moment. Now the first movement is called The Great Acceleration and it makes allusion to a period of time that started in 1945, so right after World War II, and continues to go until this day, some think. In short, it is a period of frenzied growth and uh, exponential growth in terms of population, travel, carbon emissions. Uh, it is a period of time that is unique and that we will that will leave lasting consequences uh, for us and for the planet. Now stillness, the second movement, uh, is a direct allusion to the pandemic and when everything came to a halt. You can feel and hear the tortured harmonies, the, the melodies trying to make their way through, but it was a difficult piece to write because we were in the middle of the pandemic when actually I was writing it. But reckoning kind of gave an opening because I equated to the stages of grief, a moment when we're able to deal with our own thoughts and our own pain, but also a moment of meditation, a realization of how to move forward from here. How are we gonna relate to ourselves, our societies, our planet? And so this is a moment of realization and awakening that leads us to alignment, the very last movement, which has a more positive outlook, hoping for a future where humans have finally learned how to coexist peacefully and in harmony with Earth.
Um, and then you go to okay. Because yeah. otherwise she's gonna have to come in late on on. Yeah, this, no, I agree. Which is weird. I agree. And I'm also leaving out some downbeat of O. But I'm liking, liking it. it. I'm liking what she's doing. Okay, then do keep doing what you're doing. Really awesome, like doing. awesome. So okay, Thank great. You. I think um, some of and what's, I mean, some of that is just in that I have to make sure I don't, I don't, I'm not too fast. That some of that is me, that I have to make sure that um, I am thinking that kind of stretch. They are not really. Nothing is sostenuto, you know. Nothing mm. because it's all this yeah. sort of thing but the overall texture has to happen the overall right? texture has to come out like okay that. Come all right out. all right that's helpful you know when you think about it art is uh, a mirror artists create the opportunity for us to reflect on uh, our life experience you yes. know by by you um uh writing a piece of music you're you are synthesizing that and i get a piece of your your human spirit and then by engaging with that myself i understand my my own experience a little bit better and i think that that's something that is you know it's uh, a composer can write timeless music beethoven wrote timeless music we all learn every time we hear and perform beethoven but there's no there is no replacement for an artist writing here and now so I, those are ingredients that I always look for in my works. Uh, if I'm look, going to look for a subject that I'm interested in working with, I look for something that speaks to our times, mm -hmm. to the zeitgeist, mm. but at the same time has this timeless quality to mm -hmm. it. You know, in a way, like when you hear Carl Jung speaking about the collective unconscious and the archetypes, those are things that involve and touch everyone. Mm. You know, why do we love opera? Because it deals with love, death, beauty, pain, everything. And all those things are universal to all of humanity mm -hmm. and have been for centuries and will continue to be. But if you're also able to combine that, the power of those, you know, intrinsic feelings uh, that we all experience, plus you're able to communicate stories that are relevant to our time, like the way we're doing in altered landscape, a phenomenon such as, you know, climate change, something that 200 years ago was something that was not being discussed. If you're able to marry those things, then you have something that will touch people now, but will continue to be relevant as we go move into Absolutely. the future. Absolutely, and that's certainly what we hope for. Not something that is dated, but something that is you know, lasting.